this morning certainly fits into the process that we at St. Joseph's is involved in last week and this weekend with our Reaffirm and Renew program. Last week with our ministry fair to give everybody the opportunity to see all of the different activities here. And this week when we have our Commitment Sunday where we fill out our commitment cards and, and once again look at our relationship to this parish community to see whether or not we are, as I said last week, just takers or if we're givers. If we're just people that come in and sit in the pew and kneel on the nailer and receive and, and go out and just expect it to always be here, or whether it really becomes a part of our lives and gives us the opportunity to share in the miracles that happen in ministry. I mentioned last week that at this weekend we would have different people from our community speak to us and share with us. And at this Mass we have Ellen and Kent Taylor. And so I'd ask them to come forward at this time and share their story of St. Joseph's with all of us. today and I'm very honored to be speaking to my fellow St. Joseph parishioners and any guests here today on Commitment Sunday. My name is Ellen Taylor and I've been a parishioner here for seven years. A little bit about myself is that I am Ken's wife. He's a wonderful husband most of the time. <laughs> we are parents and we have three young adult children, a son-in-law, a daughter-in-law, and a beautiful granddaughter. And by profession, I am a social worker who works with the chronically ill. My faith journey includes being born into a Catholic family to parents of strong faith who took me and my seven siblings to church every Sunday and sent us to Catholic schools. And I'm very grateful to them for sharing their faith with me and giving me the message that God is important in your life. Since this is Commitment Sunday, I thought I would share briefly with you my story of how I became a Eucharistic minister here at St. Joe's. Now, I never really envisioned myself as a Eucharistic minister. I did not think I was holy enough, nor good enough, and what would people think of me? Aren't we supposed to be humble and not attract attention to ourselves? And I was busy with life. And I was scared of making a mistake, too, of tripping on my way up here or of dropping Christ. But my journey to become a Eucharistic minister started with my grandmother, who was a woman of very strong faith. At Mass, I will always remember how she received Holy Communion. She carried herself so reverently. There was no mistaking the way she walked, the way she folded her hands the way she concentrated in prayer and said amen, that she really believed that Jesus was present in the Eucharist. And after she passed away, I had this strong desire to receive the Lord under both auspices, both the host and the wine. Before she died, I would just receive the host when I went to communion. But again, after she died, I had a very strong desire to also take the blood of Christ. Looking back on this, I guess it must have been that I wanted to feel more connected to my grandmother and to the body of Christ. The second thing that happened on my journey to becoming a Eucharistic minister occurred years, years later when my father died. As we were helping my mother with uh, preparations for his memorial mass, we divided up the things that needed to be done, the readings, the gift bearers, the music, but there was a need for a Eucharistic minister, and I wanted to take care of this need for my mother. So I volunteered to be a Eucharistic minister here at St. Joe's, so I could in turn be one at my father's memorial mass. And I also asked Kent to, if he wanted to be a Eucharistic minister with me, because I thought this would be a way that Kent could feel more connected to his faith, and it would be something we could do together. 
So here I am with my grandmother and my father drawing me closer to my Lord, to, to Jesus. And when you have an extra role at Mass, when you help at Mass in a small way, the Mass does become more special for you, more, more meaningful for you, and you definitely feel more connected to worship and to Jesus. And you want to be more than a spectator when this holy sacrament is celebrated. Now this brings me to the story of the most fun I ever had at church. And it occurred right here at St. Joseph's during Holy Thursday, Easter week celebrations. Now just like I never envisioned myself as being a Eucharistic minister, I never really envisioned myself getting my feet washed on Holy Thursday, mostly because I never had time to get a pedicure before Easter. <laughs> But my friend Teresia had her feet washed, and then she walked down the aisle, and she asked me if she could wash mine. I felt that I had to say yes, because she's my friend. When she did wash my feet, this huge amount of joy swept over me. It was incredible. I was just very, very happy. It seemed to come out of nowhere, and it was just an incredible feeling. And I guess the Lord was giving me a special gift last Easter and reminding me of the joy we feel when we serve others. These experiences have strengthened my faith. My faith has also matured by taking advantage of different opportunities offered in previous parishes that Kent and I belong to. At St. Agnes in Chicago Heights, they were starting a 24-hour adoration chapel, and they needed people to sign up to be adorers. What a great experience this was. Surely this time spent praying in the presence of Jesus helped me to grow in my faith. And then at the former St. Martin's here in Kankakee as a catechist, what a rewarding ministry religious education is. You really have to learn your faith when you have to teach it to little ones. And this helped me to become a more disciplined believer. And again, here at St. Joseph's, as a renewed small group leader, getting to know and become friends with people who I would see attending Mass at the same time as me, but who were strangers, getting to share our stories of faith with each other and embracing together, serving the homeless. What a fabulous journey this is for Kent and I, and we feel so grateful to serve together with our friends. So if you can make time in your busy schedule to do something extra for Christ, you won't regret it, and you will find that it's one of the most important things that you will do. Now in the time, now when the church is being torn by scandal, now is the time to build up the church, and your efforts will make a difference. If you participate in one of St. Joe's ministries, you'll find that your faith will deepen and your love for Christ will grow. Time goes by so fast, don't procrastinate. You will help your faith to grow and you will also be a great example for your children. I regret that I did not do more with my children in the church when they were growing up. In closing, I want to let you know that the Lord has answered so many of my prayers. I just can't believe it. I can't believe how blessed I have become. Now I'm not saying that if you serve, the Lord will answer all your prayers, but you can't outgive God. In Luke chapter 6 we learn, gift, give, and gifts will be given to you, a good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured onto your lap. The greatest gift that the Lord has given to Kent and I was to answer our prayers for children. To build a family was a struggle for us, but through the adoption process, we had the privilege of becoming the parents of three amazing, wonderful, bright, good-looking, and hard-working children who are young adults now. So I truly believe that the Lord will richly bless you for your faith and good works, for your efforts to build up God's kingdom here on earth, and I hope and pray that you'll respond. Good morning. My name is Kent Taylor, and you just heard a few of our stories from my better half. 
These are a few of my experiences of the joy of leaving my comfort zone. Um, and doing this is leaving my comfort zone. <laughs> where, uh, where, I needed, where, where, I was, where I'm needed here um, and before I come into St. Joseph's. I too grew up in a home where we all went to church every Sunday, maybe before meals. My mother was involved in, in religious education. Um, but as teens, we sometimes got involved in other youth activities and maybe we skipped a few Sundays. And that habit went partly into college. <laughs> and the reason I mention this is because the power of invitation was tremendous even back in college where I had an old roommate who was so positive and so I don't know, outgoing that he would invite myself and others to the Newman Center every Sunday. And that experience was tremendous. I remember it now warmly and fondly, and I think about that when I get the invitation to do things. I go, yes, I want to, I want to say yes. In my 20s, I went back to church every week. I got invited to ministries like religious education and youth and the young adult ministries. And uh, I just, at first, I worried, and I thought that this was out of my comfort zone. My mother was a teacher. I wasn't. I'm not. And uh, what was I doing? But then, as I immersed myself in those ministries with kindred spirits like me, I realized what a profound and positive impact it had on the kids, on the young adults, and just as much or more on me. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not entirely sure why it took me years to rediscover the joy that I felt in participating in ministries and prayer groups. Uh, by the way, it was not related to the children because in the last new group that we participated in at St. Bartholomew before here, we took the kids, the kid, our kids and, and, the, and the children of the other people in our prayer group all had a blast on their own and had their own little group. Um, it was a win-win really for the families, the kids, uh, for all of us. Um, here at St. Joseph, the first invitation I remember was to be a dealer at a blackjack table at Vegas night. Now, I was initially reluctant again because you know, I had never done it before, but I'm so glad I said yes. I had a blast. I gladly answered the invitation to serve in that capacity years after our youngest son graduated from here at St. Joseph's. In fact, last weekend at the ministry fair, somebody asked me, was I interested in dealing for at Blackjack again this year? And I said, absolutely. Just don't let it sneak up on me like it did last year. There have been several other opportunities, like being a Eucharistic minister um, and serving you for the past two, two and a half years has been a joy and an honor. The birth of her granddaughter and her baptism right here at St. Joseph uh, was also quite joyful. And I'll share a visual aid with you of that joy. <laughs> um, two years ago, I was sitting where you are today, about to fill out the commitment card. I was looking for another joyful opportunity to join something that, that has meant a lot to me, Renew. I had no idea there was going to be anything planned here. So I wrote on the margin of the commitment card that I was interested to serve in any capacity if we're going to have a Renew group here at St. Joseph's. It must have been the act of the Holy Spirit telling me to do this because, you know, like I said, I had, I had no clue that we were going to have one, and two days later, they called me and said, how'd you know? <laughs> and since then, we've had a great group going. So. I was also invited to attend the Presidio weekend. This is a three-day weekend that is full of fellowship, faith, faith sharing, and prayer. It was during that weekend that I felt a new sense of calm and warmth, warmth wash over me. I had been gravely concerned, really, about a chronic and worsening health issue. I won't get the details here. In my prayer, excuse me, in my prayers, I was assured that God can cure and would take care of me. And since then, somehow, things have been a lot better, miraculously. In that same time period, 
my son was deployed to Afghanistan, our son was deployed, deployed, and I started to pray at least five decades of the rosary every day for a safe return. In spite of the 200 pound IED that blew out the transmission and the track of his armored vehicle, he came, he came home safe and sound. So, in conclusion, I love to get invited. I had a friend tell me once that you cannot walk on water unless you get out of the boat. So I'm inviting all, all of you all, this is our old priest just said, to get out of the boat, join a renewed group, or to start your own with my help if you want, and, or join another ministry of your choice. Do it today, write it on the side of your commitment card, uh, the way I did it. And we'll all win. Thank you for the opportunity from both of us. God bless. Thank you to Ellen and Ken for coming and sharing with us and showing how the miracles of ministry do work and how God is involved in our lives. We are going to take some time to make a commitment and if you did bring the card that was mailed to you, there's some in our racks for you to fill that out, either financially with a, a commitment that you're willing to make or if you have some ministry that tweaked your concern last week over in the hall or something that you've been looking at in the bulletin, you can also write any of that in the card. But once again, this is the invitation for all of you to become involved in this community so that you can experience the working of God and grace in your life and not just be the taker who walks in the door and sits in the pew and then leaves again and wonder why life doesn't seem the way it should be. Let's take some time for prayer and commitment. Thank you.